status and presentation. Oh, and a hush fell over the crowd. Hush. Whoa. Your mom wants to Remind us where we are on that map. Oh, guys, do you guys know where we are? Yeah. So right around. <laughs> Boom! Yeah, right in there. That's where some of the key is. There's Key West. There's Marathon. Isla Morada. Ooh. No, I'm just kidding. There's really sea bases. We're right around here. These are the lower keys. That looks like a conch shell, doesn't it? Alright. So, sorry, I said Moat, but it's Noah. Noah has his icon stations, and they're going to take, um, Various meteorological and oceanographic readings, meaning that they're going to measure the temperature of the air or the water. Uh, why would they want to measure the temperature of the water? To make sure it's suitable for things to live. That's exactly right. So they monitor flare ups of, yeah, they generate heat mass flare ups of temperature spikes. So this particular one <laughs> is bleaching hotspots in 2015. So Oh, so this scale bar here, that's zero to five degrees Celsius. So you can see as temperature increases, and you can see it's particularly hot, maybe in that three degrees area right there, the potential for coral bleaching goes up. No surprise to anybody. Or we watch. So this is in a different unit. This is just degree heating weeks. So like heating over time. Boom. So you can see, oh, it gets pretty bad. Maybe eight degree heating weeks. Um, this is again in 2015. 2015 was a really bad year for coral bleaching in the Caribbean. Um, the Caribbean already has lost approximately 80% of its coral due to climate change related conditions. How many? 80%. Wow. And that's happened over the past century, but more than, uh, more than the last 50 years. So it's sort of accelerated in its rate of loss. Um, but it keeps getting worse. And the stuff that's left behind is not getting a break anytime soon. 2015, we had a huge um, bleaching problem. Definitely got to alert level two. <clears throat> These are the sort of things that you'll see on most monthly bleach watch reports that it'll generate. So, uh, no stress, watch out for stress. Warning, alert level one, alert level two. And those are basically directly correlated with the temperatures of the sea on the reef. Whoa, that's not good. Um, 2015, you can see in September, we reached alert level two, and a lot of coral died. Um, it bleached, and then it wasn't able to recover, and then it died. Um, this is that data illustrated a different way. Oh my goodness. This is in 2017, 2018. These are months down here. Right, skip past all this. All right, 
to the basics. What is the coral reef? Who knows? It's an underwater ecosystem. Underwater ecosystem? It's a shallow water ecosystem because that coral starts with a P. Photosynthesizes. Photosynthesizes, that's right. What's your answer? Photosynthesis. Oh, it's uh, the main builder for corals and it's formed by past and present organisms. Oh, Zach can read. We were all wondering, and that makes it feel so much better. Yes. Um, it's formed by past and present organisms. What we mean by that is dead coral dies, this united skeleton builds up that physical structure that new coral will live on top of. It's very biodiverse. You can see there's a lot of things in this picture. If I told you to name all of them in 10 seconds, you couldn't do it. And the main builders of reefs are, like we know, the coral. Ooh, anemone. So a lot of people say, oh, coral, why do we care about rocks? Well, clearly it's not a rock. It's got tentacles. People say, coral, why do we care about plants? Well, clearly they're not just plants. It's got tentacles. All right? It's both. <laughs> tentacles is the answer. If anybody asks what a coral is, just point it out and be like, it's got tentacles, bro. Right? So it's <laughs> All right? Technically, coral is a rock, plant, and an animal all rolled up into one. Who can explain that to me? Why? It has a limestone, limestone skeleton. Mm -hmm. It photosynthesizes, so it's an autotroph. And it is also an animal because it has can consume its own energy and has animal cells. Awesome, yes. So it's not actually the coral itself that photosynthesizes, but inside its tissue is a endosymbiotic algae, exactly, right? And that algae photosynthesizes and provides 80% of the food that the coral will eat. So it's actually a huge part of their metabolic need, and catching things with their little tentacles, that's almost secondary. No thoughts. All right. Classification, if you're wondering. Kingdom, they're animals. No. Phylum, they're cnidaria, named after the characteristic nematocysts. That's what some of you felt when you touched the upside down jellyfish paddleboarding. Who got stung? Yeah, those are nematocysts. <laughs> yeah. You can see with those right there. They're basically spring loaded syringes filled with um, venom or poison. Venom, right? Yeah. Spring-loaded syringes filled with venom. Um, so enjoy those. The coral have those as well, but theirs are much smaller, and most species cannot puncture your skin. The notable exception is does anybody know? Fire coral. Fire coral. That's exactly right. Fire coral will mess you up. I have touched on it. Does not feel white enough, but you know, I survived. No big deal. Like super cool. All right. Class. Anthozoa. That means their polyps have a flower like appearance. Oh, so beautiful. Subclass, Hexacoralia. What does this prefix mean? Hexa? Six. Six, six, that's right. That means they have six fold symmetry and six tentacles. That's ten, but you know what I'm trying to say. All right. And they're sclerotinian. So when we say sclerotinia, we're talking about the hard coral. We're talking about the ones that are putting in all the work to lay down all that calcium carbonate on the Look at that. Look at that animal. What a magnificent creature. So creepy and gross and beautiful. I love it. <laughs> All right, so to talk a little bit more about the relationship between the animal and the algae inside, we see the animal is the coral polyp itself. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, but inside it lies the zooxanthellae, or zooxanthellae, as some people say. Uh, the zooxanthellae eat the waste of the coral polyp. Um, they produce. <clears throat> Sorry, they are going to eat that carbon dioxide, the nitrates, and the phosphates, and in return, they will provide the polyp with sugars, amino acids, and lipids. They feed each other in what we describe as a mutualistic symbiosis. Yes? Good thing there's no phosphorus, because we have the non polar. Well, yeah. Phosphorus is non polar, and if it's in water, it's. Somebody took biology class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so the zooxanthellae, just to be clear, those are the ones that are undergoing photosynthesis. So these byproducts, these guys here. Um, all right, what is coral bleaching? Well, coral bleaching is when healthy coral, which has color, becomes bleached, so it turns white. Pretty obvious, right? Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So it's 
So there are several stages to how a coral will bleach. First stage, hey, everything's fine. I'm a coral. The water's great, not too acidic, just right. Then something happens. Uh-oh. They get <coughs> stressed okay. out. Why do they get stressed out? What could bleach out of uh, what could stress out a coral? Who knows? Sure. Somebody not wearing an orange shirt. Yeah. Temperature. Temperature. Can someone name another one? Oh, I was gonna say the temperature gets too hot and it doesn't too hot. That's also correct. Another one besides temperature. Acidity. Yeah, pH, right? Which is a measure of acidity. Um, what else could stress out a coral? Not enough dissolved oxygen. Maybe, I'm not sure about that one, but do you know about that one? I'm not sure. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Sedimentation and other things oftentimes act to, to sort of scavenge, like when you have anoxic <laughs> conditions because of sediment dumping off of uh, homes yeah. and things like that. Okay. Yeah. It seems to be the fact that it's struggling to live. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> what? <clears throat> it's not really the answer. Like, <clears throat> points we're trying. Uh, so the point is. The coral gets bleached because it's stressed out. It's a poor ocean conditions. Well, at this point, there's a fork in the road. They can either be dead, which means they've lost the bowel. Boo! Yes, all of their algae have left their body, and the turf algae that just naturally occurs in the ocean over um, overrides their skeleton, kills the animal itself, and then it just becomes rock covered in algae. Or it can recover. Which is what happened to a lot of the Great Barrier Reef. People like to throw out some statistics about the Great Barrier Reef that are a little bit um, misleading. Yes, a lot of it bleached. Yes, a lot of it died. But not all the bleached died. A lot of it came back. Um, they have a little bit better water circulation over there in that part of the world, so they can fight back against a lot of the, the diseases and the bleaching events that we can't because the Caribbean is not a very well circulated place. All right, examples of bleaching. What does this look like out in the real world? Well, it looks like that. 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 It happens to all kinds of coral because all kinds of coral have this symbiotic algae, uh, symbiotic relationship with the algae. Um, but you can see it's generally a, a general, like, colony wide loss of color. Um, if I saw this out in the wild, I would think more like disease, but I guess a common is bleaching. That's so interesting to me. But yeah, bleaching is sort of a paling of the entire um, colonial organism. So you can see it's not dead yet. It's not overrun with algae. The animal's there, but it's transparent. So you can just see right through it to the calcium carbonate skeleton. Um, but if conditions do not improve, that animal is likely to die. All right, so things that are not bleaching. There's several species of coral that have naturally white parts of them, including the fast-growing corals, like the Acrophorids, um, namely staghorn, and I think elkhorn, hard to tell. Looks like it's just encrusting right now. But um, they grow really, really fast, and so they have these growing tips that grow faster than they can incorporate algae, so they naturally have white tips. That would not be considered bleaching. That's just a healthy coral cruising along. All right, other things that hurt coral. Well, there are coral diseases. And you can see diseases, they can also cause the coral to be white, but it's a much more localized condition. So you can see that there's a visible line of disease spreading over the coral surface. It's not that the whole thing is dying all at once, it's that there are these isolated spots where the disease, where the infection is spreading over the whole coral head. That's how you can kind of tell the difference, that's how I look for it. It also often has very characteristic colors associated with them, like this black band that forms. We call that black band disease. The white plague, it's kind of got a white stripe, you can't really see it here. White plague. We got the yellow blotched because, hey, it's yellow. I mean, we're trying to keep it simple for you. Black band again, so not too bad. All right, other things that might cause a coral to look quote unquote bleached, predation. So um, coral are a part of the life cycle, they're part of the ecosystem. Things do eat coral, like parrotfish and worms and other kinds of organisms. And so they'll maybe leave little scrape marks on the coral surface. But as you can see, there's no distinctive pattern, rhyme, or reason to what's going on with this coral. It's just got little scuff marks from animals feeding on it. And it's not like this whole thing's going to die, it's just got little things on it. Um, <clears throat> all right. 
training materials. We don't need that. All right, this is what we'll be working with. New 2018. Oh, yeah. Uh, these are the data sheets we'll be filling out. So it's got some uh, observer information on there. That's you guys. Uh, it's got some site information. That's where we are. So we can get the lat along, the type of the vessel, what we're even doing out there, all that sort of stuff. And then this is where it gets really, really easy. So you're going to snorkel tomorrow, and you're going to be looking for the things that I described right now. And you're going to say, did I? it's going to ask you, did you observe signs of bleaching? Well, if you didn't, you're done with your survey. Boom, no. Did you observe signs of disease? Boom, no. You're done with the whole survey. If you did, you keep going. If you did, you keep going. So um, it's going to ask you, overall, how much bleaching did you see? It's kind of a qualitative measure. It's kind of hard to see. But it's basically like, I saw a little bit of bleaching. I saw a lot of bleaching. It's all bleached. Pretty simple stuff. And then, if you know, you can break down those general estimates you made into the specific kinds of coral. So we got like, uh, and they have those listed out here, those little key for you, like boulder corals. Those look like uh, flower corals. Those are fleshy corals, maybe lettuce corals, pillar corals. So that has the little key that corresponds with this section here. If you guys have any questions about IDing those corals, um, feel free to let us know. It also has little like categories of coral loss, and those again are detailed in this little diagram here too. So like that's condition zero. That zero bleaching. Oh, condition one is approximately what was that? Like eleven percent bleaching. So, so it's pretty obvious, you can just read it. Um, but it's basically trying to gauge, to your best guess, how much and what is being bleached, slash disease. All right, observer details, date, time, name, phone, email address, uh, vessel or organization. Our organization is, of course, sea based. Site information, the GPS coordinates, the location, the site name, the maximum depth. A loop key that's like 18, 20 feet at most. Um, buoy number, each buoy on the reef has a corresponding number, which we will be writing down. Um, site information, you want to note um, all the conditions. So like, let's say the wind is going really fast and bottom temperature is really hot and there's not a lot of cloud cover. So they're going to say, wow, every time there's not a lot of cloud cover, there seems to be a bleaching event. What is the correlation there? Well, maybe there's nothing to scatter those UV rays and the sun is just beating down on those corals and bleaching them really hard. You know? That's why this metadata, all the stuff that isn't the main thing that they're uh, observing, metadata is really important because you can draw connections between what's going on when you took the observation and the effect that you're directly measuring. So, very important. And it's just going over again the yes, the no. All right, overall bleaching at the site. Pale on upper surface. So, if you see something like this, you would categorize that as paling on the upper surface. You can see that this whole coral head, that's not going to die probably, um, not in the next couple days. It seems to have light bleaching where it's most um, exposed to the sun. Um, paling, a very light paling. So you can see that this organism here has a lot of its color, but it's basically where it was brown before, now maybe it's light brown. Where this was yellow before, now this is light yellow. It's not bleached white. Bleached white looks like this. It is crazy to see. It's really, really sad. That's basically, I bet all that's going to die because that is a very sensitive species of coral. That's actually what a lot of the corals around here used to look like. If anybody here has ever been to the Keys in their youth? Anybody here? No? Okay, not here, obviously. But not the youth. Adults, um, those of you who grew up in the Keys, the people who work here, some of the old captains, they remember the reefs looking a lot more like this. And you can imagine, it's like it's like if you took a forest and you just took away all the bushes, there would be a lot less habitat for all the animals in that forest. And we've seen a corresponding loss of fish or animals. He used the same metaphor, so it's really sad. All right, um, bleach coral dying penalty. Are you gonna update the slide? No? Okay. So, here are the categories, absent. 1 to 10%, 11 to 30%, 31 to 50%, 51 to 75, and 76 to 100%. So it's basically asking if you're best guess. But totally healthy, totally bleached. See the difference? Yeah, pretty sad. All right. More examples. So here's a little uh, ID lesson for you guys. 
So we have brain corals. Guess what? They look like brains. You guys are so smart, just like these corals. There's the labyrinthiformis coral. It has grooves, just like all the other brain corals, except there's grooves in the walls of the grooves. So it's like a double maze. If you can believe that. The strigosa coral looks like your generic um, brain coral, except at the base, it will have really, really straight parallel lines that don't bend or squiggle. I guess it kind of grows initially like that, and then as it grows larger, it starts to contort and form the more traditional maze-like appearance. Mindrina mindritis. Um, this is like a spiny-looking brain coral, so it'll have like really sharp edges. Um, Colpophilia natans often has very discolored valleys from the uh, from the walls of the maze, so it will have like sort of a two-colored brain coral appearance. Um, branching and pillar corals. These are the corals that are, are, I guess, were the most characteristic corals of the Florida Keys. People used to travel all over the world to see these, and now they're almost entirely gone. It's really, really sad. Um, you can imagine seeing like something like that, that's like the size of a shipwreck underwater, would be pretty crazy to see, right? Um, you're not going to see something like that nowadays unless you go to very, very remote places that are sheltered from, well, humans. Um, uh, Acropora palmata, that's the staghorn, or sorry, prolifera, that, I've never even heard about that, it's cool. Does that occur in the Caribbean? I don't know, but um, these are the main ones. So Acropora cervicornis, that's the staghorn. You can see it's got pokey little fingers, like the horns of a stag. Um, palmata, that's elk horn. It um, grows much thicker, flatter branches. We have the Dendrogyra cylindris. Cylindris, what does that sound like? Cylinder, exactly, it has these cylindrical spires that stick up. That's a uh, pillar coral. That stuff used to get huge. It was crazy. Um, you can see, still see still see some of the skeletons around Key West because people used to break them off and harvest them. <sighs> We're so great. Um, there used to be one <laughs> at Blue Key that I would monitor. I'd come back the next year and it'd still be there. It'd be a little smaller and I'd be a little worried. This year I came back and I was gonna show the kids. I was like, hey everybody, who wants to see my favorite coral? And it was dead. So they're really, really um, fragile. Uh, really characteristic species. They, I think there's only like 13 colonies left in the whole um, Florida Keys reef track. So that's pretty sad. Um, Madrasis, it's pretty cool. A little deeper, it's not likely to see that. And Parietes parietes. The good news is I do see um, a lot of these here. Um, Parietes is the same genus of the coral that we will actually be growing in our coral restoration facility, so. Yeah. It'll look something like that. Fleshy corals, these are really, really cool. I still see these on occasion. Um, they look like somebody tried to start drawing a maze and then they just gave up. And then they just start drawing little caterpillars in the middle. Um, they're really, really funky looking. Uh, they're really, really cool. And they're really, really fleshy um, because the tissue surrounding the skeleton is really, really large and the polyps are really, really large. So you can imagine each one of those orange dots there in the maze, that's a mouth. So that's a mouth. It's a labyrinth of mouths. Pretty gross, pretty cool. Question? Did you see one of those when I was when you were in kayak? When you were kayaking? Yeah. You didn't tell me? That's crazy, I love these. That's cool, I'm glad you saw that. That means there's some health and health right there. So I fish like, oh, I'm not so much that. Oh, nice to step on it. That's cool, yeah. Um, the fleshy corals, I think, are some of the coolest ones you can see. Um, flowering and cup corals. You know, I, I see these on occasion at Luke Key. Um, I don't see them looking like that. That must be in an area where there's a different algae that they're incorporating to get that deep blue. When I see them, they do look like this. Um, but yeah, they're pretty cool. You can imagine that each one of these is an individual um, polyp. So much larger polyps than something like this, where each one of these dots is a polyp. Leaf and plate and sheet corals. Um, these usually grow uh, under rock ledges, so they need a little less light than the other species of coral. Um, they look kind of like lettuce. So they kind of sheet out and form this neat pattern of webbing. You can see their polyps are really, really small. So each one of those little yellow splotches there is a polyp. Very cool. All right, and encrusting and boulder coral. So this actually have these actually has the corals that we will be growing. So we're growing this one right here, Varietes asteroides. Did anybody see this out in the range when we went snorkeling? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually it's doing pretty well. 
compared to a lot of the other species. And I think that's why they gave it to us. They don't trust us fully yet, so they gave us a, <laughs> a very hardy species of coral. Um, so Morbacellas, they're the uh, large bouldering corals. Look at that, that's crazy. Um, Morbacella franksi, franksi is like this guy, but it kind of naturally pales, so people often think that it's in distress when it's not. There's a Sidorostrea, um, Sidorea, it's a fun one to say, Sid Sid for short. It looks like somebody just got some Play-Doh and just took a pencil and punched a bunch of holes in it because all the holes seem to go inward. And then there's the uh, Solanostrea Vernoni. I think we're also growing that one too, right? I think it's the other one he said. Uh, I got a rock. Yeah, <clears throat> this one is really, really cool. I love this one. So I'm really excited that we get to grow this. So why does that, why do you say that one naturally bleaches? Yeah, so well, it has the appearance of natural bleaching. So it's not actually technically coral bleaching because coral, coral bleaching is the term that they've given to this um, wave of basically coral threatening conditions. That but it expels its zooxanthellae? Right, they don't necessarily expel their zooxanthellae, but they grow in mounds. And those mounds, like the um, stack worm corals, can kind of grow faster when they can incorporate algae. Ah. So again, that's just sort of the coral outpacing the incorporation. Oh, also, I forgot to mention this one. Did anybody see a coral like this out on the reef? No. No? I did. Somebody did? You did? Yeah. I think this one is really cool looking. It's got really fat polyps. It looks like somebody just glued some Cheerios to a rock. Um, yeah. Or fruit loops, depending on if the polyps are up or not. They can be really, really colorful. Yeah, Montastria cavernosa, the great star coral. Because they're great. All right. And all the uh, categories I just mentioned to you are on this sheet. No stress, Haley, partial bleaching, bleaching. Pretty obvious, right? No stress. Haley, partial bleaching, bleached white. All right, disease. Black band disease, because it's got a black Not band. Good. Yeah. Is it? Um, white plague disease. It's got a white ring around that. Yeah. Um, white plague disease again, this time on the dichotomia. This one's pretty cool too. Wish we were growing that. Whatever. I'm not good at this um, Stony coral tissue loss disease. This one is the one that um, started. When did this start again? I just forget the start date. Oh, it started in Miami when they dredged the. Two years ago. Two years ago? Yeah, they think they, they came from the port of Miami when they dredged it for the cruise ships. And uh, it unearthed some ancient pathogen. They don't even know if it's viral or bacterial, but it's been just decimating pretty much every species of stony coral in the Keys. So it starts small, but it goes really, really fast. You can see that's the 18th of January, 1st of February. And by the 4th of March, the sucker is dead. See, that's not bleaching. It's got algae growing over it. That means that animal is totally dead. So in the span of two months, it's wiped out higher system of animals. Uh, and this is the progression. Okay, wow, so it's actually started in 14. Right? Yeah, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, now. So it just reached the Florida Keys. Um, it actually passed Key West this year too. That's an update. Um, I don't think they have it in the dry trip too just yet, but the way the currents work here, it's probably only a matter of time. Yeah. But it's been found um, Yeah, and it's, I mean, most diseases, I mean, this coral is no stranger to diseases, but this one moves faster and affects more coral than we've ever seen. So this must have been some crazy ancient evil that they dug up. Um, all right, this is from Isle Morata, Florida. That's higher up in the Keys. It's uh, live tissue, leech tissue, and dead tissue. So it's got algae growing over it. It kind of looks like ice cream, but it's sad. Um, sad ice cream. Sad ice cream. This is again to illustrate how fast this, this disease can go. January 5th, January 19th, by February 1st, most of this guy is dead. Yeah. This one, they don't even know what this is. They don't even know what that is. There's a really big prevalence of diseases propping up in um, the Keys, and it's all been very recent. They don't really know where a lot of these are coming from. They're kind of popping up faster than we can research.
research them and ID them and you know, let alone try to fight them. So it's, uh, it's a real shame. I see this one actually a lot now on the race. And that one. That, there was uh, big colonies of sit sit at Munson Rocks when I worked here two years ago. They looked like that. And now one of these huge boulders that was the size of a Volkswagen bug is now dead. So whatever this thing is, it's pretty insidious. Oh, those pictures are so sad. All right, let's talk about something funny. Fire coral. Who's been stung by fire coral? You. You have? What do you feel like? Not good. Not good. Yeah, that's about how I sum it up. Fire coral is pretty hardy, so if you see this one bleaching, you know the water quality is probably pretty bad. Um, it's hydrocoral, not a stony coral, but a sclerotinium. Um, it has stinging polyps, so if you look closely, you guys can see those uh, nematocysts that I told you about. There's basically spring loaded needles right there. They're so big you can see them with the naked eye. They feel terrible. Um, it is an encrusting coral, and it's in the family. Milliporidae, so it probably has a lot of pores to sting you with. Not fun, but pretty funny when someone else gets done. Because <laughs> it's not life threatening, but they're all like, ah, God, and they freak out, and I'm gonna die, and I'm like, no, but you're gonna be in pain for about 30 minutes. Alright, so, zoanthid. These are not coral. I'm sure everybody out there saw some of these. Um, they're often mistaken for coral because they look like coral. Um, they are cnidarians, but they're um, Nidarian, but they're not the stony coral that we're looking for. They're more similar to anemones. It is encrusting, um, but this we will not be reporting on our data sheet. So if it looks like this, kind of like creepy, trypophobic nightmare popcorn, it's not going on the sheet. Yeah. If you have any questions, talk to me and I can definitely key out the difference. But that's coral, that's not. All right, Gorgonians. Um, Gorgonians also are not the corals that we are looking for. These are not the coral you are looking for. It is an octo coral, not a stony coral. So how many tentacles do you think these guys have? Hey, we guys are so good. Uh, also known as soft corals. Um, it is branching because it has branches. They have many different species. Sea fans, sea wits, all that stuff. Who, go, who has seen any of these on that trip today? Our trip this week. Yeah. They're actually doing pretty good. <clears throat> um, with the larger stony corals starting to go extinct, there seems to be a regime, regime shift towards more like uh, turf algae and octo corals. So these guys are sort of filling in the niche that the larger corals have left behind. All right. Um, and all the data that we will send to Moat gets um, collated into a report that gets released at the end of the month. And so throughout the summer, we'll be getting reports on the risk of bleaching for the summer. Uh, just from talking to both staff, they don't think, they don't predict that, um, that we're ever going to hit like a low level two this summer, like we did in previous years. So it should be a pretty easy summer in terms of bleaching, which is, which is nice. Um, but I mean, it's year to year. We could lose it all next year. But you know, it's about the pain. Um, they have a website you can go to to view all this information. Um, severity of disease in 2018. So. These are all data points from people like you, citizen scientists. And they have a survey size here of 380. Some of those were scouts. A couple of those were me. All right. Um, green is no bleaching. Yellow is failing. Red is bleached. You can see in 2015, things were no bueno. A lot more bleached. Um, 2014, also no bueno. But 2018. Uh, relatively pretty good, but you know, maybe there's just less coral to bleach. Who knows? All right, so while you're on the reef, um, hot tip look for these yellow tags. If you're looking to fill out a bleach survey, this is a really easy way to do it. Um, Moat has done all the hard work for you, so they've identified corals that have disease or signs of bleaching and they've attached a bright yellow tag to them as seen here. Um, so what I want you guys to do, if you can, if you have any of the staff cameras or your camera of your own, could you please take a picture of the tag with the coral in frame as well, and then we can put those all in a folder on our computers, and we can send that folder over to Moat, and they can, um, they can use that picture for their own data purposes. And they can generate PowerPoints like this for y'all, and they can use computer programs to map out the percentage of 
tissue loss and calculate the rate at which these diseases are moving and all that stuff. So it's helpful. It's sad, but it's helpful. Um, okay. Hey, this is actually the species that we're going to grow. Uh, mustard hill. Yeah, mustard hill coral. Yeah. Varieties of asteroides. This is healthy. This is what it would look like if I slept in. No. Uh, <laughs> if it looks like this, Mike's going to get really mad at us. <laughs> Uh, now this is, uh, that's not going to happen. Alright, there's the great star coral, alive, bleached. Um, Colophilia, alive, bleached. Parietes, uh, alive, oh no, just bleached. <laughs> um, yeah, these images are so sad. Who saw that coral logo this morning? I did, but that's pretty cool. Alright, so as you can see, way back when, the reefs used to look a lot different. All coral. Now they kind of look more and more like this stuff in between. <clears throat> Dead rock. Oh my gosh, this is so sad. Skip, 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 skip. Oh, it's a cool picture. That's the uh, group brain coral I was talking about, like the double maze. You can see there's like a groove in the maze. It's like my favorite kind of coral. Also, wow, um, this is bleached coral. Has anyone seen the documentary Chasing Coral? No, you should. It's on Netflix. It's free. It's really awesome. Um, <laughs> corals, corals, when they die, um, when they're right about to die, they do this thing that's really, really beautiful and also, therefore, really sad. But it's also very beautiful. They will fluoresce these beautiful neon colors. Some of them are purple, some of them are green, some of them are orange. Um, it's like somebody just filled in a coral with some highlighter. Nobody knows why they do it. Um, it will happen kind of all at once. So this picture is a great barrier reef where there's just like milky white coral with neon green valleys and it's, it's really, really stunning. And then the next day all those coral have been overtaken with algae and they're dead. So it's almost like a requiem dance for the coral. You know that word. It's a death dance. Yeah, it's very exciting. All right. So that's the end of the slideshow. It doesn't really have a happy ending.